Hello everyone and welcome back to Brickified. With the release of the new LEGO Ideas A-Frame Cabin, what better time to take a look at and provide my rankings on every LEGO Ideas set that's ever been released. I can't wait to read the comments on this one. But there's a total of 45 mainline sets on this list, so there will be a few speed rounds throughout. I'm also going to exclude 5 Ideas branded Giftwood Purchase promotional sets, but without further delay, let's get into it. At the lowest spot on our list, at 45, I have Ideas 007, the exosuit from 2014. A lot of LEGO idea sets are rooted in pop culture, which really makes this theme popular, and this set to my knowledge has no ties to anything and is overall just another mech that we get all the time from LEGO. It does have a lot of cool looking elements that make up the mech, though. At number 44, we have the Kuso or LEGO Ideas 003 Minecraft Microworld. A short history lesson is that the Kuso was the name of the original LEGO Ideas theme. It was co-created by LEGO and Kuso, which is a Japanese partner of the LEGO group, who set up the platform for fans to submit LEGO Ideas, and if it reached 1,000 supporters, which was updated to 10,000 supporters years later, then it had a chance of becoming an official LEGO set through the theme. But back to the set, personally I think this set is actually worse than the Exosuit at 45, however, this came out the year after Minecraft was released, so it was a really quick turnaround for LEGO, because I'm sure it helped create a whole new theme for LEGO, being the Minecraft line. I'm just personally not really into Minecraft, so that's why it's here on my list. At number 43, we have the LEGO Ideas 013 The Maze. This set ranks low on my list because it's just not something I'm very interested in. That being said, it is a very cool idea, and I can see how people out there could enjoy playing with this. It does have a few different options to place on top, a standard looking maze, or even a castle looking setup. At number 42, I have the Ideas 023 The Pop-Up Book from 2018. Although it's a very cool idea and can serve various functions, I was just not too keen with spending 70 US dollars on a book build. However, the book itself could display nicely closed up on your bookshelf, but inside you can display your choice of two different nursery stories, including Red Riding Hood or Jack and the Beanstalk. I should have got this for the figures though. Before I move on to number 41, I wanted to make a quick statement that this video and my rankings are solely based on my subjective thoughts and opinions of these sets. Some of the pop culture sets in this list I watched faithfully as a child and others I did not. Also I have no intentions to bash any of these sets and their original creators. And lastly, if your favorite set does not end up in the top 10 or ranks low, I apologize for that. That set just did not have the same appeal to me. And make sure to play nice with others in the comments. At number 41, I have Ideas number 021, Tron Legacy from 2018. Now I have shamefully never seen the original Tron movie, but I can further defend its placement here because as a person who's a few short years off my 30s, I do prioritize display sets over play features. While there's a little base included to help with display, it's more of a play set in my eyes and repetitive builds are also a negative for me, which you get two identical vehicles in this set. At number 40, I have the first ever Kuzo or Lego idea set, and that is the Shinkai 6500 Submarine. This set ranks here because while I used to love submarines, because I used to love Titanic as a kid, don't ask me why, but here the set does look a little boring, and while I think Aqua Raiders was excellent theme and should come back, underwater sets are very play focused, but not as cool, at least to me, to display on a shelf or something. Because on a shelf it's above water, however, Fish tanks are always a great choice for these type of sets. Breaking out of the 40s, we have our first lightning round where I will quickly go through a number of sets that are generally in the same sort of concept or sub-theme. At number 39, we have the LEGO Ideas 008, the Research Institute. Small little playset, not too much to display. Overall, a good idea. I do love the T-Rex fossil that foreshadows a future set. At number 38, we have Ideas 002, the Hayabusa which is a small build of a Japanese robotic spacecraft. I do like space related sets, but not really into the smaller, lesser known spacecraft. At number 37, we have ideas number 005, the Mars Curiosity Rover. I actually quite enjoyed this set. Likely a nice desk display piece for many of people. It's just this list is harder and harder as we move on. At number 36, this will probably make a few people mad, and I'm sorry, but I have Ideas 029, the International Space Station. I contemplated picking up this set many times, and while I think it's a great piece of spacecraft and history, I just don't like the scale that it's in. I do wish it was bigger. It also looks like a very repetitive build, but these are just my subjective opinions. 
finishing off the speed round at number 35, I have Ideas 019, The Women of NASA. Now, as I stated previously, I do not hope or mean to offend anyone. I think this set has a lot of power and really celebrates these brilliant and talented women that helped NASA achieve many great things. Inside, we have Margaret Hamilton, known for developing the navigational software for the 1969 Apollo project. We also have Sally Ride, where Sally was the first American woman in space in 1983, and Mae Jemison was the first woman of color in space in 1992. And lastly, we have Nancy G. Roman, who has been given the nickname of the Mother of Hubble, and she was the first woman to hold an executive position at NASA. Overall, I like the message of this set, but it's just not the best display set or looks to have very fun building techniques. At number 35, I have the Adventure Time set from 2016. I was slightly into Adventure Time at one point in my life, but I did not follow it religiously, so I never really knew what was really happening in that show. I can remember some funny moments, so it does bring up a bit of joy. Really, it's just a character pack and 50 bucks felt a little steep for this, but it would remind me of some good memories if I displayed it. At number 33, I have Ideas 009, The Birds. Probably a bit higher on the list than it should be based on the competition before it. Believe me, I hear you International Space Station lovers. But I don't know, I just like the look of this. And it's quite intricate for its scale. And just something a bit different. My favorite is definitely the Blue Jay. At number 32, I have Lego Ideas 045, Table Football. This set was a big departure from the original design submission, but it had to be shrunk down to ensure structural play. This set is also extremely overpriced at $250, US and the sale figures show it because it immediately went on sale for 20% off at lego.com within like two or three weeks of release, which is unheard of for Lego, but is happening more frequently with new large and expensive overpriced sets like the Hulkbuster and Black Panther bust. It does come with a ton of minifigures and accessories, which offer a lot of customizability, but ultimately I think this set can be fun and enjoyable for some people out there, but I would rather have a real foosball table at a fraction of this price. Think about that. At number 31, I have Idea 042, the Jazz Quartet. While I like the new LEGO Jazz Club modular building, I'm just not that much into jazz. I think it would be a good display set for certain household themes that aren't necessarily big LEGO people. I also think it has some of the best looking instruments that have ever been built in LEGO. It is also modular so you can reconfigure the stage sections around a bit and even the brick built characters. Overall, I really want to build this set, however I don't care to display it or own it afterwards. Does that make sense? Breaking our way into the top 30, this is where things start to get hard. Because any one of these sets could be someone's personal favorite, well I guess any of the previous ones could as well, and as I'm going through this list I am finding it really hard to rank all of these sets. Something must give and the list must go on. At number 30 I have LEGO Ideas 004 Back to the Future Time Machine from 2013. Probably a favorite for a lot of people who had this set now 10 years ago, but anyhow with the newer DeLorean set out now, it really overshadows this set. It was cool at the time, albeit a bit small. I ask that if you are enjoying this video, please consider smashing that like button, subscribing, and turning on notifications so you never miss another Brickified video. With that out of the way, we enter another speed round, which will be the sitcom slash show reference sets. Some of these are really great sets, guys. Just thought they would go here because there's still a bunch of great and massive builds to come. Actually, the speed round will be back in a moment because I have to put something else here at number 29, and sadly, that's Ideas 037, the Fender Stratocaster. Now, if you watch some of my set reviews on my channel, you may have noticed that in some of the side shots, I am a guitar player, and I do own a Fender Stratocaster. So you would think I would love this set, and again, this list is hard because there's just so many great sets, but ultimately for $100 or $120 now with the price increases, this set just doesn't look like it's worth it, and ultimately I really do not like how the guitar looks. It's just too bricky, I guess. I think the set needed to be in a larger scale, overall. However, I do think the amp looks great. It has a lot of detail around back, and even on the inside with builds of the tubes that power this type of amp. I will likely buy it before it retires, but I think it will be slightly begrudgingly. Now back to the sitcom, TV show, music theme, speed round. At number 28, I have Doctor Who from 2015. Looks good. Could see it being someone's favorite. Never seen the show, unfortunately. So it's lowest for the TV shows. Maybe I should check it out, though. At 27, I have Ideas 010, The Big Bang Theory. I like this set, and I have watched probably half of the episodes in the series, but I think it could have been done a bit better by LEGO. I don't know, I just feel like something's missing in this set. 
At number 26, I have Ideas 036 Seinfeld. I have seen a fair bit of Seinfeld, tried watching it from the beginning the other day. Quite comical, but wasn't really getting into it that much. But I do think the build is better than the Big Bang Theories, so it ranks a bit higher. At 25, I have Idea 014, The Beatles Yellow Submarine. I do like The Beatles, and this is definitely an iconic set, just not my favorite on the list. You do get the whole crew, which all do look very good and highly detailed. At number 24, uh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this because it's good. I have Ideas 044, The Office. I love The Office, truly. And while I do not always enjoy cringe comedy, which is a good portion of this show, looking at you, Michael Scott, well, while I think Lego did a fantastic job with this set, I like the others in this list a bit better. It is full of detail, but I don't know, also boring, it just looks like a big gray base plate full of people. I don't know what I was expecting out of this set. At number 23, I have Ideas 006, Ghostbusters Ecto-1. A great set in its own right because it looks great. But the remake of the larger 240 US dollar Ecto-1 makes this one less special. At 22, I have 025 Disney's Steamboat Willie. An absolute classic of a set that I'm really kicking myself on for not purchasing it. I can just hear the music now. At 21, I have Ideas 024 The Flintstones. This set looks amazing and I love all the details inside and out. I particularly like that all the characters can fit inside the car and the big piece of the raw dinosaur bone that can be attached to the side. At number 20, I have Ideas 027 Friends Central Perk. I love Friends to death. It's a very wholesome show. It's on par with The Office in my opinion, but I just think this set displays so much better than The Office one. And it's a great build, full of detail with a great value at 60 bucks. It's sad to see that it just retired. Whew, deep breath. With that out of the way, this list is getting harder and harder, but I'm still going to have to speed things up a bit until we hit the top 10. At number 19, I have The Globe. This was a great idea, but I think the $200 and now $230 price point is just a bit too high for this set. I would like to own it, but I don't want to pay for it. Does that make sense? Bonus, you can convert it into a Death Star. At number 18, I have the Vincent Van Gogh Starry Night. This set is definitely someone's favorite out there, and I can see it, but for me, the $170 price point is just too high. And while I respect this set for opening the doors for more art sets like Hakusai's The Great Wave, I hope I said that right, which I am definitely purchasing, I just didn't like the protruding nature of the build. I just don't want to hang something like that off my wall personally. It just sticks out a bit too far. At number 17, I have the Ship in a Bottle, which was a very hard one for me to place on this list. I did not ever buy it and I regret doing that. I kept looking at it like, yeah, it's 960 pieces, but it's like $70 and like 100 or so of those pieces you just dump freely into the bottle portion. Ultimately, it looks good, a nice display piece, just the price point was a bit much for the size of the build in my opinion. At number 16, I have the Lego Ideas Treehouse. This set was actually on my purchase radar for quite a while at 200 bucks but has since diminished my desire at the $250 price point. I really want to build this set, but it makes it here on the list because I don't know what to do with it after. Even for me, who's planning on doing a Help Me Build a Lego City series, I just think that money would be better spent on something else to complement the city than this. At number 15, I have the Lego Ideas Caterham. I'm not as much into cars as I used to be. However, I remember seeing one of these on the British Top Gear show, and it was awesome. And so is this set. Smaller than some of the other higher ranked sets, but this one's just done so well and faithfully. I love the details everywhere and the smooth no studs look of this thing. Kudos to the designer. At number 14, I have the Lego Ideas Grand Piano. A relatively massive set, and it is one that I 100% want to build, but again, I don't want to pay for it. At $400, this set is expensive. But it has some cool features like being able to sync up and play with music, which is one of the reasons it's probably priced the way it is. Ultimately, I really do want to build it because I want to build all the complex mechanisms to make it work, but I just wouldn't know what to do with it afterwards. I just don't really need a big Lego piano in my house. 
At number 13, I have Sonic the Hedgehog. I love this set for what it is, a relatively cheap set that reminds me so much of my childhood, where I would get frustrated with Sonic and not make it past, I don't know, like level 3 or 4. I think this was done very well, although different than the original idea's designer's concept. But ultimately, I think it was the right choice for sake of nostalgia. At number 12, I have the Lego Ideas Medieval Blacksmith. I really enjoyed this set and it looks to be a great building experience. It has a lot of great interior detail and yeah, I just really like it. But for me, I display a bunch of Star Wars, Lego City items, and other odds and ends. And I just think it will stick out a bit too much on my display arrangement. At number 11, I have Winnie the Pooh. I am looking to get this set very soon, but I just had to make some big purchases for my Lego City. Video is coming very soon, so get subscribed. I love Winnie the Pooh as a child, and me and my wife just actually watched one of the original movies the other night, and we really enjoyed catching back up on it. Although I think there's a lot of detail here, inside and out, I just can't for some reason get over the feeling that I think it's a bit too small. Like, I think it's worth the 100 bucks, but maybe I just wish it was about, I don't know, 10 to 20% bigger at $120. And now we have made our way into the top 10 where things will get a bit heated, I am sure. At this point in the list, every single thing is great, and I own or will own all of these very soon. If you skipped all the way to this point, please consider liking the video and subscribing and turning on notifications so you can fast forward more of my videos in the future. Jokes aside, breaking our way into the top 10, we have the Home Alone House. An absolutely massive build with just about every single detail inside and out from the original movie. I love this set, and I will be purchasing it this year before it retires, and I will enjoy every aspect of building it, I'm sure. The original Home Alone is a definite watch each holiday season, and I hope to build it while watching it this year. Anyone out there prefer Home Alone 2 over the original? Let me know in the comments down below. I like the original better, personally. At number 9, we have Lego Ideas, the typewriter. And I don't know, guys. I know it's a typewriter. But I just want this set so, so much for some reason. I never pulled the trigger on it because, yeah, it, it's a typewriter. But I just want it so badly. I love the sand green color, and it comes with a bunch of cool printed pieces for the keys. I just really want to build the internal mechanisms, and I think, oddly, it'll display pretty nicely. At its original $200, I thought it was fair, but at its new $250 price point, it's making it a bit harder for me to justify. At number 8, I have Sesame Street. Sesame Street was probably a big portion of a lot of people's childhood watching this video right now, or at least it was integral in your children's childhood. I used to love Sesame Street, and I've been wanting this one for a while. When my wife found out that this set existed, all financial considerations went out the door and we went out and purchased it right away. I love how much joy this set and just me building it brought out of her. I also like that it can be integrated into a Lego city with some modifications. The only negative thing that I can say is they didn't include my boy, The Count. At number 7, I have the old fishing store from 2017. Just retiring before I got out of my Lego Dark Ages, I really hate that I missed the opportunity to pick up this set for its original $150 retail price. But I do have plans to get it in the future because it's awesome. It looks very different than any other LEGO sets, almost like a mock. It has so much detail all over it, inside and out, and I can't wait to build it and place it into my soon-to-be-constructed LEGO City. To be completely honest, I recorded this video a couple weeks ago before the official reveal of the LEGO Ideas a Freighting Cabin. And because of that reveal, I'm going to add it to this list, so this list has a total of 46 sets now. And since I think it's so similar to this last set, and like that it was supposed to look like a mock, even though the official LEGO one looks a little too pristine versus the original LEGO Ideas look, I'm going to add this one here at number 7.1. But one of the biggest things that fans were upset about is that it doesn't look as rugged or run down as the original Ideas uh, submission. And that's because the original LEGO Ideas submission did not have every tile on the roof and such laid all the way down or clicked into place. And you could definitely do that on your own with the official LEGO set, but LEGO is never going to release a set that tells you not to fully click down a part. Another big criticism that people have is that the trees aren't as full as the original model. And while I can definitely see that point of view, I do like both of the trees, the original and the Lego trees, in, in separate ways. There's good detail inside and out, and it is modular, and I can't wait to have it and somehow integrate it into my Lego city. 
and that's why it's made a slot here at 7.1. At number 6 I have the Pirates of Barracuda Bay from 2020. At $200 this set was maybe put off by some, but that was a mistake because it's massive. And the big bonus is that it's got an alternate build of a more of a shipwrecked island. Well, I guess that's the main set and then the boat is the alternate build. And the ship alternative build is a soft remake of set 6285, the vintage Black Seas Barracuda pirate ship, a Lego Land exclusive from 1989. And I actually owned this vintage pirate ship, which is a reason I did not pick this set up at the time. And I hate myself for that because although the ship is probably a better build all around, and a bit bigger than the original, the shipwrecked cove would have complemented the Ventures set so much. What was I thinking? And I really wanted this set to be at number 5, but I had to put something else there, and that is the Saturn V Rocket. This is one Lego idea set that just won't retire, and still at a very fair $120. And it's awesome. Particularly, I love the scale. It's literally 40 freaking inches long. I just love that this thing exists, and that's really all I have to say about it. Definitely pick one up. At number four, we have the new motorized lighthouse. I've been wanting a lighthouse for a long time. I freaking love this thing. As much as I can't wait to integrate this into my Lego city and how awesome it is, the price point does really hurt. Lego did make a new element, the Fresno lens, and included the power functions, which is like a $50 minimum add to the price. But at the end of the day, something just doesn't sit right with me about it being $300. I will say that as much as I love this thing, I do think the MURPS or medium ugly rock panels base just doesn't look as good as I think LEGO has the potential to make it. If you made it to this point of the video and like these type of ranked lists, then consider checking out my ranking of every LEGO modular building after this video. Bringing us way into the top 3 we have LEGO Ideas Wally. and the reason being is because it's freaking Wally. My wife and I love the Wally movie, we watch it probably once a year on average. It's just so good. This choice at the top three is probably pretty subjective, but it is my list. I really hate that this set came out in my Lego Dark Ages. I really want it, but $400 is a bit steep, bud. Just not making its way into the number one spot, and I have a good reason for that in a moment. We have the Lego Ideas Voltron from 2018. Why Lego Dark Ages? Why? I love this set. When I saw it on shelves towards the end of its lifespan, I wasn't sure of where I remembered it from, and I wasn't spending as much money on Lego as I do now. So 180 bucks really put me off. I hadn't spent that much money on a single Lego set yet. I really hate that I didn't buy this because it eventually clicked to me that I used to watch the original 1980s show as a kid all the time, when it would randomly show up on Adult Swim or Toonami or wherever I watched it. But anyway, this set has all the functions. The arms and legs can come off and morph into other forms and then can be reattached. Overall, it's quite massive and just brings back so much nostalgia. I can't wait to start watching the show again and reliving one of my childhood memories. And hating myself even more for not picking it up at retail. And without further ado, at our number one spot, I have Lego Ideas, The Dinosaur Fossils. And the reason it's number one on my list is because one, Dinosaurs, and ultimately, this was the set that got me out of my Lego Dark Ages and brought me to where I am here today. But when I saw this set, I had to have it, and there was no looking back. I am a Lego man again, and for good. I was also a dinosaur nut as a kid, watched Jurassic Park and Lost World literally almost every single day, and I also wanted to be a paleontologist as a kid. I have big plans for this set in the future by encasing it in a rebrickable model that is a museum. It's quite expensive though because you need a police station and assembly square, but this set just means so much to me and that's why it's my number one of the Lego Ideas theme. But those are my thoughts. What are your thoughts? I would love to hear what you have to say in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider smashing that like button, subscribing, and turning on notifications so you never miss another Brickified video. And until next time guys, keep building and thanks for watching.